We're going to go ahead and begin this evening, and for our introduction, I wanted to take us to the book of Nehemiah tonight for some thoughts that I gathered this past week. I'm going to be being in the eighth chapter, but before we begin, I wanted to just give a little bit of background. This is, the wall has already been built, and they've already taken a genealogy of all the Jews to see who can trace their lineage back to Abraham. And so the the city of God, Jerusalem, that was in ruins, we see is beginning to be built again. Things are beginning to be renewed. And this is where the eighth chapter picks up. And I'm just going to kind of skim until we get down to the eighth verse. This is where the people gather themselves together as one man. They came in front of the water gate. They spoke unto Ezra the scribe and brought the book of the law. They wanted him to read it. He came out, and standing in the midst of all the brethren, he read there before them. It says, all the ears of the people were attentive unto the book of the law. And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood, which they had built for this purpose. And they read that day. In verse 8, it says, so they read in the book, in the law of God, distinctly, and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. Amen. And that's what caused me to... Um, ponder this week is the reading distinctly. They read distinctly. The reading of this book prior to this day was a little different than the reading that they made on this day from Ezra. The people came with great expectation to understand and wanted to know what the word of the Lord was for them. They gathered themselves together in unity as one man. They had made preparation for this day. They had actually built the pulpit of wood so that Ezra could stand before them and speak to them the word of the Lord. So they were eager. They prepared for this day to receive instruction from the Lord. And they all gave their attention fully to this reading, the distinct reading of the word. This day, the reading was with purpose and in order to draw conclusions. Those who read did so in such a way to make the law of the Lord stand apart from anything else that day. They made it to where it would stand out in the hearts of the people. The minds of the people would be able to take hold of this word that was being read. The way they read this law of God gave preeminence both to the law and to God himself so that the people were easily um, attentive to the Lord himself. Now, as they did this, they gave the sense of it. They showed it to be right. They showed it to be reasonable so that the people were able to understand and enter in themselves to what they could participate in. They were able to understand what the Lord had told them. Now, when the people were able to receive the word of the Lord this way, they rejoiced and they went on their way making great mirth. In verse 12, it says, they went to make great mirth because they had understood the words declared unto them. So they went their way rejoicing. They were comforted, they were satisfied, and they were given great hope because they were able to understand what the Lord had spoken to them that day. Now this reading's, reading distinctly, I wanted to consider that for a few, few minutes, reading the word of God to make connections, to draw conclusions. That's what reading distinctly would be. Reading in such a way as to gain God's sense or intention in writing the things he did. Why did he write these things to us? What did he intend for us to gather from these things? Making distinctions when we read the word of the Lord. It's like saying that in our reading, we are seeking or we're asking and we're knocking. These things come about with this distinctions. Reading distinctly is sparked by a great desire in the heart of the one who's reading. And thus it produces a good soil in the heart for the word that's read to take root and then to grow and bear fruit there. But I also wanted to take some additional steps, not only reading distinctly, but then what, if we read distinctly, what that would move us to do. If we read distinctly, it would also affect our hearing, and we would be able to hear distinctly. This would be the hearing of faith. Can we hear distinctly, also listen? Hear with the intention of taking hold of the truth and use it to build build with these things that we've heard. Jesus said, take heed how ye hear. So let us hear distinctly, making distinctions in the word as we hear it. Next, after hearing, might come thinking. Thinking distinctly, being able to draw these conclusions together and piece all of these scriptures and these truths together to be able to make a unit, make a case. 
Let us use the word of God and set it apart as preeminent in our thinking and be our standard upon which everything else is based in our thinking. We think about everything in view of the word of God first. That's our basis then, making distinctions for everything else that comes into our mind. We take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ based upon the word of God. Then following thinking would be speaking. After we're able to read and hear and think distinctly, we'll be able to speak in such a way as well, making distinctions in our speech. We are given grace. This would be speaking with grace and having our speech be seasoned with salt. The Lord will enable us to speak so distinctly. And our speech can be clear and concise, presenting a clear and unmistakable case for the word and for the Lord himself. This speaking with grace, also we remember it ministers grace to the hearers. So there's a ministry to those who hear this distinct speaking. And of course, the sum of all these things would be living. You live distinctly. We live differently from the way we used to be and differently from the world around us. There is an evident difference in the way that we live. Um, Living distinctly is being separate and holy unto the Lord. So tonight in our meeting, like the people in our account tonight, we have come together in unity as one man. We have made preparation for these meetings. We've prepared our hearts. Some of us have prepared to speak. We've prepared to receive the word that's been given to us. We've made preparation for tonight. And we come with every intention of giving our full attention to the word that's spoken tonight so that we can understand it so that we can go our way rejoicing because we've understood that the word has given to us. Now, the men that read that night, Ezra, that day, Ezra and the the Levites and those who stood with him that read so distinctly, we can liken their ministry unto the ministry of the Holy Spirit unto us because the Holy Spirit, he can make distinctions using the word in our hearts as we hear tonight. Hebrews 4 Verse 12 says, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and in the intents of the heart. This is the distinct ministry of the spirit. He also um, gives us the sense and understanding of what the word of the Lord has to say. Jesus spoke of his ministry in John 16, verses 13 and 14. He, the spirit of truth, when he is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak. And he will show you the things to come. He will glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. So as we begin this evening, we want to have this this desire and this ability to think, to hear, to speak distinctly. But we also want to ask that the spirit would have this work in our hearts, that he would have free course to make these distinctions, these connections, and these conclusions in our heart as we hear the word together. So we'll open with a word of prayer and ask the Lord to bless our time tonight. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful to have gathered again in this place with the expectation of receiving the understanding of the things you've prepared for us. So Father, we're asking that your spirit would run and have free course in our hearts tonight making distinctions and helping us to draw conclusions in the things that you have prepared for us in the truth, that we would be able to be nourished and strengthened, be enlightened, and have insight from your word. We ask your blessing upon those who will speak to us, and Father, we do pray that you would be mindful of us tonight and keep us safe as we're gathered together tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.